What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to our final video of Halloween Horror Nights week. In anticipation for next week, ha opening night of Halloween Horror Nights. We are very excited here on the Nights of Horror. It's a very stacked lineup, and today we're going to be talking about our most anticipated la Can't talk today. We're going to talk about our most anticipated mazes. Uh, there we go. And we, uh, I know for sure we're going to have very different list, and I think a lot of you, especially Sammy, will be shocked on mine um, because your num my number one is not what you think it is. I'll tell you Ooh. that right now. Ooh. So I already know going into it, you already was like, I already know what number one's going to be. It's not what you think it is. Ooh. Oh, I'm just going to start Stay tuned to find Stay tuned out. What the number one most anticipated list maze is for 2022. Um, I guess I'll kick it off. I think Sammy and I will be similar on this one because we've kind of already discussed this. Uh, just this one. Uh, number nine for me is going to be Halloween 1978. Um mm. Now, the only reason I put that at, at the bottom is, it, and this was a hard list to make this year. This was a very um, challenging one because every property is unique in their own ways. Um, for me, I've already seen Halloween 1970 at the event, but doesn't mean I'm excited for it to be coming back. Because for me, the way I look at it is it's great marketing promotion for Halloween Ends, which will be coming out in mid-October. Um, so... The way we've been kind of branding it here on the Nights of Horror is go see how it all started at night, uh, at Halloween Horror Nights and then go see how it all ends in cinemas this October. You know, so that's a good marketing point. I don't know why they haven't taken advantage of that one, but, you know, you know, I think that's a good marketing point. So It is. It is. You should work um, for them. Yeah, that's – I mean, I'm excited to see Michael Myers back. You know, it's it's been so, – uh, we saw him last year in Halloween 4. Now we're seeing him again this year in Halloween 1978. Um, and this was a shared IP for both Orlando and Hollywood, so – I'm excited to see what the differences are between the two mazes as well. I mean, I know Murdy does a really good job with the Halloween mazes in the past, so I'm excited to see if there's going to be anything different, um, if they're going to add the flashback scene from Halloween Kills, because that technically pl takes place in 1978, so that'd be like a cool like little twist ending to kind of give the fans, like, you guys wanted the new Halloween for so long, so we kind of done that for you. But haven't heard any news yet, but if it's the exact same thing we got in 2015, I believe it was, um, then I'm excited for it, uh, you know. No, it's still going to be a great walkthrough. What about you, Sammy? Yeah, uh, number nine on my list, in Halloween 1978, uh, is uh, Tony Spoiled for all you wonderful <laughs> listeners out there. Um, I, I, I just, we saw uh, Michael last year, um, and him coming back another year is like, <clears throat> it's cool, but it's not like I need to see this maze every time I go, assuming I'm going more than once. Um, so I, it's cool. I'm excited. Like like Tony said, this list was very difficult to make, um, and I've been pondering this for <laughs> since I knew we were gonna. Since all the mazes were basically announced, been pondering where do we where do I list each and each each and every maze? Um, but we've seen Michael. It's gonna be a cool walkthrough. I kind of wish they would have done either kills or ends, um, but I mean, 78 is cool. Um, I'm ima I'm imagining it's gonna be a good walkthrough. I, I like the location it's going in in that Curious George area, so I'm excited. I mean, we had a uh, banger of a maze there last year with Curse of Pandora's Box returning, so that was a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, put some respect on that. That's Curse of Pandora's Box 2, Electric Boogaloo. Boogaloo. Okay, <laughs> that makes sense. The reboot. <laughs> the reboot. Um, but yeah, Halloween 1978 for number nine for me and uh, Sammy. Rob, what's your number nine? Uh, for number nine, I'm gonna throw uh the terror tram in there. Oh, uh, bro! Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I know, I know. Nope. Please don't, don't come at me. Don't come at me. It's just yeah, my Rob's opinion. Officially off nights of horror now. <laughs> okay, my why is my camera off? I, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I it, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. So, you know, I, I, and it's it pains me every time I see Hollywood Harry and I don't get a Hollywood Harry maze. That kind of pains me a little bit, but I've seen, uh, you know, us and, you know, I, I just don't the my excitement level excitement level for nope. Um, you know, it's not that high. Maybe I just, I just don't know what they're going to do. So that's kind of why I have it a little lower. You know, the, uh, not saying it's going to be bad or anything like that. I, I do want to see what they're going to do and maybe, you know, come come you know a couple times i go through these mazes uh and, and the terror chat maybe it'll move up but for right now that i'm just kind of like we'll see we'll see all righty sammy you're number eight my number ocho will be the horse of blumhouse the third take um i i just don't full transparency on this one i don't know how 
both of these properties are going to translate to a house. Um, I think I like both properties. I enjoy Black Phone. I enjoy Freaky. I don't know that there will be enough different scares in there. I think it's just going to be a lot of foot trigger, which Universal is in general, but I kind of want more creativity in the scares, and I don't know that we're going to get that with the horrors of Blumhouse. Um, So that's why I have it ranked lower on my list and obviously it has the potential to go higher but i think also in addition that location in the water world queue is typically not a location i enjoy i feel like it's kind of an afterthought sometimes by creative um and so i don't think it's going to get all the love that it needs um and so we might be getting more black walls in there so i definitely think that's why it's lower on my list rob you're number eight my number eight is uh, the horrors of Blumhouse and uh, kind of for the reasons that Sammy had mentioned, I, I just don't, I, I think if you took one of these properties and made it a full maze, maybe you could tell a full story of the movie. And, um, but with, you know, it being like, you know, one, one property gets half the maze, the other property gets the other half of the maze. I don't know how they're going to pull that off as, as far as telling the whole story. I, I do think, you know, I, I do like freaky. I love the black phone. I just think like th- there is enough to do, uh, these houses in, in, in a proper fashion. I just don't know if it can be done, if you're splitting uh, one house with two properties, but uh, you know, again, I'm excited to go through it. I, I, I do have some, antis- you know, some excitement to, to see how they're going to pull off certain, certain, uh, you know, that that's kind of, let me one, one, one more, one more second too. That's a little thing too, is like, I, I'm like with certain kills or certain things where I'm like, Oh, I, I wonder if they're going to do this. I'm not sure if they're going to be able to do it. Like I, I like there are kills or certain scenes where I'm like, that might not be in there because they might have had to cut it out because they're only using half of me. So that's that's kind of where I'm at with that. I, I do want to go through it. I do want to see it because I like both both properties, but we'll see how it goes going through the maze. So you guys are both on Horrors of Blumhouse for eight, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Number eight. Because you are too. The Weekend. What? After Hours Nightmare. You guys, you guys knew that was gonna be at the bottom of the list. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not surprised. You're lucky I'm not I didn't surprised. even put it at. I would have put it at nine in a heartbeat. But then when you talked, when you and I had the conversation about Halloween, I was like, yeah, you're right. Um, I put this a little bit higher. You know, I, I put this. I didn't put this at number nine for a reason because there's still part of me that believes that scenic wise and everything that I'm gonna hopefully be blown away by it. Um, my my biggest fear is that. You know, they went above and beyond to really get a lot of advertisement and, you know, publicity about it. And then it just ultimately ends up being a letdown. But I I have actually I actually have some high hopes for this maze. Um, I'm not a fan of the music. We've talked about this many times. I'm just not a fan of the music. But I am looking forward to seeing what they accomplish with said property. Um, so it's something I'm kind of looking forward to from scenic wise but music wise i'm not a fan of but like I, i'm hoping overall it just shocks me and blows me away and who knows when we do another one of these later on down the season that might go up on the list you know it might honestly go up because it, it might there might be something in that maze that surprises me um but from what i'm hearing it sounds really awesome and um i'm looking forward to it and it's gonna be in a sound stage so you know sound stage mazes are usually pretty fun so um Number seven for me, the Horrors of Blumhouse, Chapter Three. Now I put Horrors of Blumhouse at at, at number seven because, um, much like both of you guys, I do love these two movies, these two properties. Um, I think the only issue that I have that that uh, Thomas from TLAV, I was talking to him about it, that kind of is a little awkward is is the the set the 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 tone for each property and how that's going to translate transitioning into that tone because one of them is a straight up horror film and then one of them well a horror thriller should i say and the other one's a horror comedy so it's going to be a little bit weird to kind of transition to that um however 
I am very stoked that I hope they recreate the the room that he's in, uh, that he's locked up in, and I hope we get to see a lot of the ghost, and I hope we also get to see Ethan Hawke's character because it is advertised in the poster, so I'm assuming he's, his character will be, um, you know, in the in the maze, especially with the different looks that he has as throughout the film as far as his mask goes, which I really think is really cool. If this movie would have came out before COVID and then COVID would have happened, that's the mask I would have been wearing all COVID because that mask is just so creepy, <laughs> and it's it's something that it's just like that would be a bitch and mask to wear out in public but then people will look at me like he's gonna probably steal somebody and i'm like i'm not gonna do that um so with that being said going into freaky you know i mean I, there's a lot of creative kills in this maze i mean even if they were to touch on some of the most iconic ones like and an, the first one that comes to mind is when she splits the teacher in half in the saw i've seen horror nights do effects like that in the past so i think that that that'd be one of the kills that that, that he brings to life but to see the uh the kind of Vince Vaughn and, and Catherine Newton kind of character back and forth and them swapping bodies and stuff to see how the uh, the talent will bring out their their own talents to to bring that to life, to, to really immerse you into that film is what I'm really excited for as well. If they're going to really make me believe that Catherine Newton is Vince Vaughn and Vince Vaughn is Catherine Newton. So I'm, I'm, I'm really excited for this one, and it's looking – looking different the facade looks different it's not a movie theater anymore it looks like an old video shop from what we've been seeing so i'm super stoked for this one um and i can't wait to see what that has to bring to the table uh sammy you're number seven all right this is where i'm about to get kicked out of the knights of horror too i know what um, he's gonna say killer clowns from outer space number seven on my list um right above burger king foot lettuce um number seven <laughs> i'm so <laughs> It's a joke. Um, Killer Clowns is only there, like, because we've seen it in 2019. And I had a great time in 2019. And I'm going to have a great time in 2022. It's just not like some of these other things that are above it where I'm just like, I need to see this. Um, whereas Killer Clowns, like, I'm going to make the time to, to go through it, especially with Tony, because I know Tony's going to have a good time. And I'm going to have a good time because he's having a good time. But um, uh, unless they unless they do something wild and they, we get the clownzilla from Orlando, it's probably going to remain in that that general area come the end of the season. Just because it's going to be a good time, I'm probably not. I'm probably going to get scared once or twice in this maze. Um, but it's going to be visually fun to look at. That comes out, he's going to get scared in it. Imagine that'd be <laughs> funny. That would be funny. Um, that would go way higher on my list if that happened. Um, but I, I, it's going to be a fun time and, uh, it's going to be visually pleasing to watch as I walk through it. And that's why, but it's just not, a not the upper echelons of these other ones. I think Rob seven, uh, my number seven is also killer clowns <laughs> from outer space. Uh, for the reasons, I mean, Sammy had mentioned it, the, you know, it's just, I, I've seen this maze before. Uh, as, it is a fun it's a beautifully fun maze. Um, I <laughs> don't do, don't do it. Don't do it. I'm going to turn to cotton candy. Cotton candy um, cocoon. But you, you know, I, this is just, it's a good time. Like Sammy said, it's a good time to go through. Um, any other year, I feel like this, this maze would be higher. Um, and maybe if we've had not seen it before or had it before, but we've had it and I'm excited to go through it. My excitement level for it is still very high. I like it. It's an enjoyable maze uh, house to walk through. But you know, this year we have some we have some heavy hitters, and it's just you know it's a little lower than you know I want it to be higher. I I really did like this maze, and also the fact that like Tony loves this maze. I'm like yeah, like Tony's getting this maze back. But you know, it's just for me, it's it, it's a little lower. But you know, it doesn't mean I'm not excited to go through it. Sammy, number six. Number six. Is going to be the Tear Tram. I guess you and I have the same number six. Wow. Wow. That's wow. two. Wow. Wow. Same list counter. Uh, same list counter. Um, Tear Tram. It's this is once again, this is gonna be probably be a really good time. Uh, we've talked when, when the Tear Tram was announced, we talked about how it's great to be able to walk through the sets. Um, and then you add the addition of the nope sets. Um, you add us to the to the mix. Uh, and I'm really hoping it's gonna be a good time. I did not enjoy the Tear Tram as much last year. Um, and I'm really hoping by me uh, manifesting that it's going to be higher on my list this year, that it actually will be meet or exceed my expectations. 
Um, but um, the Jordan Peele stuff, Hollywood, Hollywood Harry, I think it's going to make for a good time. I'm a little curious on how it's actually going to play out, like how much is going to be Hollywood Harry and how much is going to be the Jordan Peele stuff. Um, I'm hoping it's, I'm hoping it's about even, uh, but we'll only time will tell. I can answer that question for you, and that's I was saving this fun fact for when I said it, so I can be like Rob's gonna be like I kind of want to change that now. Um, but uh, I look forward to the Terra Tram every year, no matter the theme, whether it's not good, whether it is good, it doesn't matter. I always have a great time going through it. I mean, for me, being a film, I mean, I can I can probably advocate for all of us we're all film uh, nerds here and for for us being film nerds especially myself i mean walking through the sets of the bates motel the bates house and the iconic world of the world scene uh, pl- plane crash scene and now adding jupiter's claim to it you know it's like to add these iconic sets that all these you know famous movies were you know filmed at and and everything and, and then to add a theme into it so like when you get off the tram all the way to where it ends in the world of the world set that's all going to be hollywood harry's original area and then when you go across the street to jupiter's claim that's where it's gonna mash with nope but the thing that got me excited about that is they got the original um what's it what, what is the uh the, the choreographer who choreo who choreographed all the moves for us uh they got her to come back for halloween hornets to design a whole new original kind of uh dance and move list like how they did in the film so it's something's going to be a lot it's going to be more choreographed to i'm assuming nope um especially with when you drive through it now you hear of course the the ufo coming the lights going off and stuff so i imagine as you're going through that the tethered will probably react to that and kind of that's how they're going to tie those two in so that whole area will be us and, and the Jordan Peele area. And then the rest of the Terra Tram will be Hollywood Harry. I mean, from what I've seen for decorations right now, it's looking like a traditional kind of play on Halloween with a twist. So I'm excited to see what that has to bring. And Hollywood Harry, I mean, Josue said it best when instead of having uh, – I we, we instead of out here calling them icons, why, won't, why don't we just call them Hollywood legends? That's our original characters, like it'd be a Jack of the Clown. I would say Hollywood Harry could be our first uh, – Hollywood legend because he's returned to the event multiple times. Um, there's so many, so, there's so much stories to tell. And uh, earlier this week we did a history of on Hollywood Harry. So I'm I'm super stoked to be going back to the Terra Tram. I'm glad they're bringing it back and to walk on the Jupiter's claim sets. I mean, driving through them is one thing, but you want to get out and see all the details. You know, there's a lot of Easter eggs to the movie there, and those are the actual sets they used for the film. Jordan Peele actually donated those to Universal Studios to Adam Pardo Studio Tour. So them utilizing them for Horror Nights is such a Amazing idea, and I'm super excited just to walk through those. Uh, uh, I'd like to, I like to six. revise my, I like to revise my list. <laughs> <laughs> um, my number six is going to be uh, Halloween uh, 1978, uh, just because Michael Myers has a special place in my heart. And yes, I am biased. Uh, Entertainment. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> um, you know. Uh, from when I remember growing up, Michael Myers was that was the first Halloween was the first kind of like movie, scary movie that I watched. So that's kind of kind of embedded in me. But, um, you know, I think he's our only like, you know, the our as far as like our horror icons, uh, he's the only one there this year. Right. We don't got like Leatherface or any of those guys. So he's kind of holding it down. So I'm, I'm excited to go through the maze. Yes. You know, we've seen we've seen Halloween several years, different, you know, Halloween four, Halloween two, you know, we, we've seen them, but uh, it's it's a familiar and safe feeling I get going through a Halloween maze. And I say safe in a scary way. With that being said, what's your number five? My number five is the weekend, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Uh, All right. So yours too, number five. All right, you and Sammy share number five. So so I'm excited to see what they do with the music with the imagery um you know we, we've seen his music videos or at least i've seen his music videos um you know they're all they're dark you know he's got a, a very unique style and i'm excited to see um he, them bring uh that to horror nights just and and i really when this maze was announced you know I, the first thing I thought of, I was just like, I wonder what they're going to do with his music. Cause obviously we're not going to, you know, go through the maze with the music straight as it is. At least I don't think so. That and that's my opinion. I know. I feel like they're going to tweak it. They're going to, you know, distort it. And I'm excited to see 
uh, you know, what they got to, you know, in the weekend maze. So, you know, it, it, it's up there for me. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Rob. I'm excited to see what they're going to do with that sound design. I definitely think they're going to distort it, slow it down, do some fun things with it. Um, because if you just on the surface, if you just heard the music, you're kind of like, I don't know how this translates, but I definitely think that uh, Horror Nights does have the capability to make it uh, better. Right. Um, in addition, I definitely know that I feel like they're putting a lot of effort into this. They did a really, I think, good job, in my opinion, doing a, a PR campaign for this maze. Um, and so they made a lot of promises, and I'm hoping they deliver on those promises. Um, so that's why I have it ranked here, kind of like the middle of my list. Not sure which way this can move up, can move down at the end of the season. Um, but I definitely think it, it should be good based upon the promises made um, at the initial announcement. While we're midway through this video, I just want to let everyone know, stay tuned for next week because we are going to go for our last Halloween Horror Nights update. Next week we'll be on the channel that next Monday. So stay tuned to see what's coming with the final preparations for Halloween Horror Nights leading into opening night. So stay tuned for that. With that being said, my number five, La Llorona. La Llorona is a fun maze. I've seen it twice already, so that's why it's a little bit, you know, but it's still up there because it's a great original. Um, what the thing I'm looking forward to the most this year with this maze is it's in a new location. In the past, it was in behind when Shrek 4D was there. Now the, uh, what is it, the, um, the DreamWorks Theater. Uh, when Shrek 4D was there and there was no Harry Potter land, they put the maze back there, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, great scares and a great telling of the uh, the urban legend of, of La Llorona. So I'm excited to see what it how it fits and looks in uh, the Parisian courtyard this year. It's a brand new location for La Llorona, home to the Bride of Frankenstein lives last year. So I'm excited to see what they do differently with this maze. Um, if they add anything new, because it's been a while since they've done this maze. The last time they did this maze was in 2012. So now you're looking 10 years later. Is there anything they're going to add to the maze? Are they going to uh, give it like a kind of like a refurbishment or whatnot? Like who knows? Uh, what what's to come with this maze? All I know is even if it's the same thing, you're all in for a treat if you've never been through it. It's such a great maze, and I'm even excited to go through it. With that being said, my number four, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Yeah, I, I knew you guys were gonna be a little surprised on that one because I, you know, you in in the past I would have put it in number one, but the, these next three for me are some heavy hitters, and I'm just like I got high hopes for them. But Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Uh, one of my all-time favorite movies, uh, horror films, and um, I have the merch to prove it. I mean, I got everything you need to have for Killer Clowns from Outer Space, autographs from celebrities that were in the film, you know, the Kyoto Brothers, all that stuff. So there, I have a deep love for this film. And even if it's the same exact thing from 2019, I don't care because I just want to go through and see the big clowns and, and the guns and some of the most iconic scenes. I mean, they really, Hollywood really pulled this maze off really good yesterday, going from the very start of the film, which started with the old man attacking the tent, all the way to the end of the film where you end up at the carnival. You know, you had the police station scene. You know, there was a lot of great scenes in this maze that just really brought it to life. You had John Masari's score. And then with the announcement of the video game coming out next year, I mean, I'm just super, I'm in, the, I'm in a very killer clowns vibe right now so i'm super stoked for that one and and I, I cannot wait for it sammy number four number four universal horror hotel um is wow i'm very shocked by that one but okay yeah number four for me is universal horror hotel um we got a glimpse into the thought process over at midsummer screen go ahead and watch that video um if you want to hear some more behind the scenes details of this maze um but we kind of left on a cliff cliffhanger um on what this is uh, and the reason why i'm ranking it a little bit lower than the other ones is because on the speculation maps that were released earlier in the season uh that was supposed to be something else over there um whether evil it was dead, evil, I believe dead, it was. evil dead or the weekend um so there was kind of a mix of what was happening in that location. And I kind of feel like this one was kind of thrown together at the last minute, not saying it's not going to be good, but I definitely think that if this was the plan the whole time, I feel like it could have went from like probably like an eight out of 10 to like a 15 out of 10. Um, but I'm excited to see how this one turns out. 
um, because we only know like kind of a little bit of the backstory of what's happening here. Um, and the, 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 the top three for me are, are, are quite just a step better and, and quite difficult to, to, to place in order. So number four for me, Universal Horror Hotel. What you got, Rob? Uh, number four for me is La Llorona. Um, yeah, I, I, I've been through this maze a few times. Uh, I'm dating myself because I'm old. Uh, but I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a a scary, but also just the way everything looked was very, like, beautiful, if that's the word. I, I, a lot of these mazes I go through, I'm just like, that, that's this is just beautiful to look at or just the, the sets. Even just, like, you can see now when, when you go to Universal Studios and you see, like, how it just is as it is, you know, the facade. It's just like, man, like, imagine just that thing lit up. It's going to look amazing. Um, so, but I, I love the story, you know, I mean, love the story is kind of like, I guess a bad way to say it. The, the sto- I like the story as far as the lore of the weeping woman. I, I was actually just talking to Robin, uh, I think it was yesterday or today about this May specifically. And she was just like, Oh, I hated it. Like that woman, like just screaming the whole time. It was, it was just scary. And I was like, yeah, it was, huh? That was like just the 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 faint like screaming of that woman it was i was like man i was like this maze is gonna be awesome to go through again like i can't wait i'm <laughs> excited mic robin up on purpose <laughs> gonna mic her up this year for all the mazes yeah just clip her up i won't even tell her. i'll just clip it under her like backpack or something yeah just, just real quick go from there so yeah so this is my number four i'm excited for it you know it it, it even if they like you kind of you're saying if even if they don't change a thing uh in this maze you know i know it's gonna be a great maze 100 uh, percent our house sorry house i we're in socal mazes are where it was yeah that's yeah. we're built on that word it's out a, here yeah it's my habit it's 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 grandfathered in already we can't change our yeah. vocabulary yeah i'm too old um sammy you're number three my number three and this is going to surprise you all is Lyarona. That really doesn't surprise me though, because if I know what you're the other, the, by process of elimination with the other two, it doesn't surprise yeah. me. Yeah, Lyarona. Once again, th- these were hard for me to to rank. Um, Lyarona. The only reason why I have it a little bit lower is because I watched the behind the scenes tour that John Murdy gave. To, I forget to what channel. Um, a few years back, I think it was 2012. And I've watched that multiple times, so I kind of know it's coming. Um, and I feel like it's probably going to end up being a very much shot-for-shot shot remake of what that was. And that was really good. Um, and so I'm excited for this one. I'm excited how it's going to lead into uh, a Pueblo de Terror, um, which, I, which was, obviously, if you watched the video yesterday, is my number one scare zone. Um, I'm just excited uh, to hear like this story I heard like as a little kid. Um, growing up in a very predominantly Mexican uh, neighborhood uh, and hearing how my friends whose family, whether they were like first generation American or, you know, relatively close to the area, um, you know, their family had stories about it. Um, and I've heard like other people who's like, like, like I said, they're first generation Americans who've had like personal experiences or so they say they've had personal experiences. And then watching in their the movie time. too. <laughs> Has had personal experiences like in their pueblo, how they've been chased by these women that kind of, you know, or you hear late faint at night, three, four a.m. when they're on the pueblo. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so like I, it's a scary thing, and I'm excited to be able to not just see the set design and see what's going on, but to see how the actors actually interact in it. Um, yeah, it's a it's this is Wait, like a nine point seven for me. So so you've you've never been through. Uh, the, the La Llorona maze, right? No, I've never been. See that that's like cool. That's exciting because you're gonna get to experience it like the first time, and it's that that's so cool. Yeah, 100%. that's uh yeah okay yeah definitely yeah definitely <laughs> oh yeah definitely uh, wow number, number three for you, Rob. Number three for me is Scarecrow the Reaping. Um, wow. You know, these, I would say, like, you know, for my top five, it was just really tough. Like, I mean, you could swap how I felt that how I feel at each moment. You could swap back and forth. But for me, just the stuff we got uh, at Midsummer Scream and kind of like the, you know, the backstory and just uh, John Murdy kind of, you know, saying, you know, what was what and what they pulled from here and and, you know, kind of like the history and, and, and all that stuff. I'm just like, that's really cool. And I mean, it just to. 
I'm excited for it just to see like the that was it the King Crow how that Dust guy Bowl looked too, bro. Yeah, man, it's just it looks it looks so cool. Um, you know, it, it, it pains me, and it's still number three is 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 up there, but you know, it, it's just like I'm I'm super excited to see what they do with this this house. Much like you boys, my top three were very hard to decide because uh, you know a really hard one this year it really is uh but i had to put universal monsters legends collide at number three um universal monsters is always a success every year i mean every year i've gone the score has been great the story has been amazing to take these properties and kind of put an original twist on them is really cool and I'm very excited with this one this year, especially from what we were getting told at, at, at Midsummer Scream, as far as, you know, you're going to be in this like warehouse and you're going to be fighting to like the death all the way to who's going to get the amulet to use for their own personal gain. You got Dracula in this one. You got the Wolfman in this one and you got the mummy and we got some sick designs from the Wolfman alone coming and some sick designs of the other monsters so i'm super stoked to see those in person um and just go through it and just to hear what slash has to uh give us this year we got a little we a little sneak peek at, at midsummer scream and uh th the thing that excites me every year about slash is, is you know and he said this at midsummer scream as long as he can you know he'll always make time to come back and do more and you know that Hearing that just makes me very happy because Murdy has tons more plans that he wants to do with Slash. And if Slash can continue to uh, release original scores, I'm hoping eventually we could just compile one big album just called Universal Monsters. Um, that would be really cool. So I'm excited to see what they do this year with that one. I'm excited to see how the score goes and translates. And I'm excited to see how scenic it looks and everything. And to see who's going to win and rule and have the amulet. Or is it going to be like uh, Orlando Maze like last year, like Icons, where they have a new winner every so often so you go through it multiple times and every night you go you get a different winner so or every couple hours so i'm excited to see what that is with that being said rob your number two my number two is universal horror hotel um just based off of what i've read about uh this house it sounds really cool you know this 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 killer that that comes back to life and uh you know and what what he does in this hotel it sounds very very uh horror movie-esque uh you know the movies like that i liked where it's very like a uh kind of confined you know very small set area and so i'm excited to see what they do with this um you know again i really don't know too much about it other than what i you know the, the quick kind of synopsis they have online but it it when I read it and just saw the look of it, I was like, that looks cool. And uh, that story sounds really interesting. So I'm excited for that. So that's my, uh, that's my number two is Universal Horror Hotel. My number two, Scarecrow the Reaping. I mean, is that your number two too, Sammy? Yeah, it's my number two. Oh, so perfect. So. I mean, what could be said about this maze? I mean, you got the iconic Dust Bowl that's that's gone down in history as, you know, the damage it done with that and whatnot and, and, and how much it changed people's lives after that happened. Uh, so, you, I mean, you got a little history involved with this, so there's the realistic point of view of it. But then you got the scarecrows who are coming to life and are just sick of being scarecrows, so they're going to make the people the scarecrows. I mean, from what we've been hearing of this maze, I mean, the facade looks incredible. The uh, the maze sounds incredible from the effects that they're going to use to like a lot of the stuff you're going to be seeing in the maze and the designs of the 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 scarecrows in this just look phenomenal. So I'm super stoked for this. And you know how we are about original mazes. I mean, Knotts does it really well. Horror Nights every time they do original mazes, they do them really well. So I mean, I'm I'm just stoked to be getting more original mazes, especially something that that's come from Orlando, and now it's coming over here and and, and we're doing Murdy's putting his take on it and, and adding some stuff to it, but kind of keeping that original concept of it. I really enjoyed it. So I'm really looking forward to Scarecrow, and I can't wait to see what this one has to offer. Yeah, I, I definitely, when uh, this maze was being built in the Carrie's George parking lot area, I was getting hyped for it. And then once we found out what it actually was, I got even more hyped. And then we get to Midsummer Scream, and then we get more layers added to that. Um, it's They haven't disappointed me with any original maze thus far. Um, and I don't think this is going to be the one that disappoints me. I think this one is going to be 10 out of 10. Um, and I really, 
like I think just growing up, everyone's seen a house that looks run down and kind of dingy and scary. And especially as a little kid, you'd be like, oh, that house is scary. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? I don't want to walk by that house. Let's go across the street or whatever. And I definitely think that this is what it's shaping up to be. Um, and then you add the layers of history on top of it. I'm I'm a history buff as a as if, if you know me personally. Like I enjoy history. I enjoy reading about it. I enjoy um, you know, kind of seeing different things and like being able to go through here, um, even just walking through a creepy house is, is scary. But then you add the fact that there's going to be scarecrows that want to kill you and turn you into one of their one of their scarecrows. That's that's really scary. And I know that there's been a lot of love and, and creativity going into this maze. Um, so I, I just I, I if like like Rob was saying earlier, if you ask me probably tomorrow, I might put this one at number one um, because. The, the number one and two are, for me are, are quite interchangeable. Um, well, that being said, number one, Universal Horror Hotel. I put this on number one because, one, it's going in the Walking Dead building, so that's kind of, in a way, a soundstage maze. Um, so that's awesome. Um, but, you know, the 20s, now that we're in the 2020s, the 20s, the 1920s are really popping again because now it's been officially 100 years since 1920. Um, so, 1922 actually, should I say. Um, but the fact that we're diving more into the 20s at Haunts now with Knott's doing Goring 20s now and now Universal kind of doing um, the, uh, the, the Horror Hotel, I'm excited to see what they do with this. Now, Little information about this. Uh, Murdy actually, I think, talked about this a little bit at Midsummer Scream, but there was a picture. Um, there was many pictures back in the day of what Universal was back in the day, some photos they caught over the years and stuff, um, specifically around that time, around the 30s and stuff like that. And he noticed that there was this one guy in every single picture. No one knew who he was. No one knew what it you know. No one, like, just know what he was. He just ran him guy that just showed up to all these events the, the the part that i found funny about that is murdy took that guy and he's kind of making him the face of this maze and just giving him original kind of look so that's how it kind of ties in with universal lore and stuff and that kind of makes me happy because orlando does that a lot at their event with their originals they tie it into a lot of stuff that's based around the theme park or the history of the event and stuff so i'm really excited that we're kind of going down that rabbit hole now and trying to experience something new with originals so and you know it's it's probably gonna give me tower of terror vibes um with that abandoned kind of hotel but then you're seeing like all of his you're gonna see his ghost kind of and whatnot and you're gonna see this haunted hotel and you're gonna see the history of like all these mysterious murders and stuff so I'm excited to see how they utilize this space. I think the area that it's at, like the theming overall on the outside, has that like 20s vibe already. So kind of fits perfectly in that vibe. And I'm, a, I'm excited to see like what this place looks like after The Walking Dead got gutted. Because, you know, no one has seen inside there since that the door shut for The Walking Dead. So it's going to be interesting to see. It's going to be a little bit weird at first to see. But I'm excited for this one because, you know, 1920s theme, an original and it's based around some random guy, but they kind of actually gave him a personality for this maze. I mean, that's just great to me. I feel like, I mean, I don't know this. You know, this isn't fact or anything. I'm just speculating here. I feel like that random guy in all the pictures was probably the custodian because the custodians are always probably. in the background. And they're all in the background of you everything. Know, like the breakfast every, club. Yeah. I listen to your conversations. You don't even yeah. know that, but I do. Yeah. <laughs> but he just probably, you know, they, they dressed a lot nicer back in the day. Yeah, yeah. Could be, could be custodian. Custodians hear everything, man. We got eyes and ears everywhere. That's true. Sammy, number one by process number of elimination. Number one, number one, Universal Monsters Legends Collide. Yeah. <laughs> I'm assuming um, that's your number one too, Rob, right? He's yeah. wearing the shirt. I was He's wondering what that shirt. shirt was the entire I thought it was Zelda at first, and I was like, <laughs> I don't think he plays Zelda. He I might. did play Zelda when he I was did. younger. Yeah, but that's a cool <laughs> shirt. Yeah, Universal Monsters Legends Collide. Since the facade has been springing up on this one, it's been it's better and more juicy each and every time you look at it. Um, I know that when they were working on this maze, there was a TikTok video that came out from the inside of this maze um, that should have been what? released. Yeah, he went inside uh, it already. Like, kind of tried to leak shit or what? Yeah, when it was being built, still, I don't know. Like, whomever they whomever they used for contracting for helping build this. Wow. Someone tried to. 
shot a TikTok in there. Wow. <laughs> I did not know that. I gotta find Man. That. Yeah. Um, and there's some great artifacts in there. Um, and then, obviously, a Midsummer Scream, we got a lot more details um, that just, you know, got my high level to 15 out of 10 for this thing. Um, and uh, this entire run of Universal Monsters that they've been doing recently, leading back to 2018 to now, every maze that they have done have been top three um, each and every year, I think, in terms of how they, what the, what the, the scaring in there, the, uh, the artistic design, the lighting, the sound, um, and then you add, you know, like, like and speaking of sound, you're adding flashes, uh, slashes, uh, music to it, which is fantastic. Obviously, in the glimpse we got, like, I wish, like, if if you could, like, I wish I could just sit in that maze uh, and listen to the soundtrack because you only get the glimpse as you're being conga lined through. Um, but the the amount of detail and, and things that are going on in that score are just unreal, um, and I and I know that this is going to be. I, I'm pretty sure this stays top three, worst case top four, because um, we got a lot of great great houses this year. Um, but I, I I enjoy it. Uh, these like I said, these all every year that they've done Universal Monsters since 2018, <clears throat> top three mazes for me. Rob, so, why, why is Universal Monsters your number one? Well, uh, kind of to echo Sammy, uh, the Universal Monster mazes from the from the year that they did the first one till now, <clears throat> they're all, you know, in the top three. At least for me, in my opinion. No, hundred percent. They, they, the music is amazing. I mean, Slash just he, it. I remember listening to uh, the Bride uh that that score and like just getting goosebumps and it, I mean, it makes it, midsummer scream when we got to take a trip down memory lane you know oh yeah I mean? for sure for sure it was just like i was getting goosebumps and it's like the you know it i feel like with these mazes and this is not a knock or anything less than uh, you know on any other maze because universal does <clears throat> a great job with all their mazes but specifically the the universal monster mazes it's just I feel like it is a whole other level. What, like Samuel was saying, from the lighting, from the sound, from from the the set design, just everything in it. And I expect, you know, this. Growing up, I was a huge fan of. Uh, judge me if you will. I was a huge fan of like the Bren, Brendan Fraser mummy movies, specifically. Those are great. They are. They are right. Um, specifically one and two. More more. You know, one I just uh, loved. And when I saw the facade and just kind of like the vibe of it, it obviously reminded me of, you know, that mummy movie. And so, and then, you know, with, with the information we got at Midsummer Scream from Murdy and just like, um, uh, and you guys, you guys even looked at me when he was talking about like, uh, you know, kind of that, that lore and how they once were like, oh, th this, this animal, you know, they thought was like, a uh, jackal but it's actually like a wolf and you guys like looked at me and how excited i was to like yeah like that's so cool and just like how it's gonna look and and what they're gonna do with these characters i'm just like and i'm gonna start crying right now because i'm just getting so pumped for this maze which is why it's my number one um and then too like i hope they do like you were saying uh tony like i hope they do where it's like every night or every hour or whatever the case may be where it's maybe the wolfman wins Maybe the mummy wins. Uh, maybe Dracula wins. They were the each one of them get to gets their time to shine with the amulet, and they won this round or whatever the case may be. But I hope they do that. If they don't, you know, I won't be too disappointed because I know I'm gonna get a ridiculously amazing maze. But that that's one of those things where it's like the little the sprinkles on on the Sunday. So, you know, I, I'm just this number one for me for all those reasons. It's just it, it, you brought I'm up Brendan Fraser's The Mummy, and the only thing I can think about when you said that was, "Hey, Benny, it looks like you're on the wrong side of the river." <laughs> Man, that movie's so awesome. We'll go watch it. With all that being said, guys, that's our most anticipated list for Halloween Horror Nights 2022. We hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you guys did. Hit that like button to show some support to the channel. Also, if you guys are brand new to the channel, hit the subscribe button to uh, stay caught up of all the things we have planned for Haunt Season, POVs, vlogs, um, reviews, all that fun stuff. So, And if you guys want to take it a step further, hit the bell notification. Be aware every time we put up those videos so you guys are in the know of when Nights of Horror puts up a new video. Oh, Halloween Horror Nights is next week, gentlemen. 
We get to step through those iron gates another year. Yes. And go through some of these most iconic properties. So you will be seeing us again really soon after that because we'll probably be making an uh, uh, updated list of our overall thoughts after going through them a few times. We got a lot of fun things store for Halloween Horror Nights, especially some visitors that we have visiting from other states. Stay tuned for that and go check out Boo Bros for that too because I guarantee we'll have some vlogs on Boo Bros. With all that being said, I'm Anthony. I am Rob. Soy Samuel. <laughs> We're the Knights of Horror and we'll see you guys in the fog. Peace. Feeling the love.